Hey everyone, uh, so this is my new uh, malware with Python series. I noticed a lot of the security videos I posted uh, got a lot more views than I was expecting, so that it seems that people like those. So I figured I'd kind of create a series that has how to, you know, do a, uh, a bunch of tutorials on how to write malware with Python and just how certain types of malware work. Um, so the, this first video is going to be how to set up kind of a, like a lab environment for how to work with malware in Python. And the way I want it to work, uh, we're going to treat, um, a lot of these tutorials are going to be using socket programming, so uh, sending traffic over a network. And the way I want that to work is my native computer here I'll just have is uh, kind of the server of um, our malware tutorials. And then if I need to use any type of like client or host devices that I want to access over a network, I'll have them set up as uh, VMs. So I like to use VirtualBox. So if you just type into Google download VirtualBox, um, the top link right here is uh, go to downloads. You can just click that. And you can do Windows. If you're using Windows, you just click Windows Hosts right here. And it'll actually download the installer for VirtualBox. It's a pretty straightforward install. I, I think I have another video on my channel somewhere that shows you how to install it. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, but just go ahead and install that. Once it's installed, uh, you actually want to go to... Um, you need to get a Windows 10 ISO if you're wanting to follow along with me. Um, by the way, in the future tutorials where I actually show you how to do this, you don't need to use a VM. You can actually do everything from the same computer. I'll show you how to do that as well. But I feel like if you use a VM, it's more realistic. You can actually see the traffic going between two machines as opposed to just accessing your own machine for everything. Um, but if you just go and type in, let's see, I haven't, I haven't, I already have the Windows 10 ISO, so I haven't downloaded it in a while, but. I just typed in download. Uh, I just typed into Google "download Windows 10" and click the first link, and it should take us to Microsoft's page. Download Windows 10 disk image. I don't know why it's taking so long to there. There it goes. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so it's this download tool now. Uh, just click that link. And I haven't done this in a minute, but we'll go ahead and open this file up. So it downloads this media creation tool. And I believe the way it works is you can choose to uh, like install it to a flash drive or just create an ISO file. Um, so we'll run this and see what it looks like because I'm sure it's changed since the last time I've used it. I won't go all the way through this because this is, should also be pretty self-explanatory. So we'll hit accept here. Man, this is slow. Yeah, so right here, we're not wanting to upgrade my PC. We're wanting to create an installation medium. We're, we're specifically wanting the ISO file. So you just hit next. Uh, just, uh, yeah, leave all this default. Hit next again, and we want the ISO file. I'm not going to hit next after this because I've already done this. But th at the end of the day, we're wanting a, a image of Windows 10 in ISO format. So if you hit next here, it should just go ahead and create one. It'll probably take a minute because I think it's like four... Let's see, I have one already on my machine. It's, I think it's like four gigs or something like that. Yeah, it's four gigs. Uh, so that's how you get the Windows 10 ISO. So we got VirtualBox, we got the Windows 10 ISO. Once VirtualBox is installed, I think you might have to reboot your machine. I'm not sure. I've already got it installed. But it looks like this uh, when you first boot it up. So we're wanting to add a new VM. So click new right here and you can give it a name so I'm just gonna call it Windows 10 malware uh, client you can name it whatever you want just I just gave it a descriptive name uh, version um, we're gonna put Windows 10 64 bit this is just like a it doesn't really mean anything this is just like some metadata about the uh, VM um, so I'm just putting Windows 10 64 bit and just helps keep it organized and it gives it a little Windows 10 icon 
Yeah, this little 64 Windows 10 icon right here. Uh, we're going to hit next. Um, I'm going to adjust this later, but I'm just going to give it 4 gigs of RAM and create virtual hard disk now. Uh, use a VDI hard drive. Most of this you can leave default. The one I recommend changing is using a fixed size. Uh, and I think Windows 10, I think the minimum is like 32 gigs. We don't need that much for what we're doing. So I, I, you want to give yourself a little buffer zone. So I'm just going to leave it at 50. 50 should be fine. And go ahead and go to create. This part will take a couple minutes. So I'll see you guys once this part is done. Okay, so it just finished creating our virtual hard drive. Uh, so in VirtualBox, we have this Windows 10 malware client that we created, and it has a 50 gig hard drive file assigned to it. It doesn't actually have Windows 10 on it yet. You can think of this as uh, this little section right here is like a rack that houses, houses all these hard drives that are virtual machines, because um, you can have more than one. You can have a ton of them. Uh, but right now, this is like, think of it as a blank hard drive. So now we need to turn this... Uh, virtual machine on and supply it our Windows 10 ISO and install Windows on it. So before we do that though I'm actually gonna click it and click settings and then go to system and here's where we assigned it 4 gigs of RAM which is fine for right now uh, but I actually want to go to processor and you can assign it um, a certain amount of cores to use from your CPU by default it's one. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give it four uh, that way the installation uh, will go. If you just leave it at one, it takes a lot longer. But I found putting it at four is like the sweet spot. It kind of speeds the whole installation process up. Um, and then for display, um, it's actually odd. Usually I was I was going to go into display here and bump the video memory up to 128 because I think it usually defaults. Most of the time I go in here, it seems to default lower than that. But, yeah, just bump this all the way up to max. Um and that's really all you need for right now and then just hit OK so now that we've given it four cores and four gigs of RAM go ahead and start the virtual machine and it'll take just a second so now this is where it's like hey what ISO do this this is a blank hard drive there's nothing on it so you clearly need to give it like a it's like if you were imaging a computer you'd have to give it a, a disk or some method of installing an operating system um, so click the I, Mine says Ubuntu right here because I usually install Ubuntu VMs. Uh, just ignore that. Yours probably won't have anything right here. Just click the folder icon. And this is like a list of all your operating system images. Um, but we need to add that Windows 10 one. So click Add. And you need to go to wherever your Windows 10 ISO was downloaded to. Mine's right here. So I'm going to click Windows 10 ISO. And it shows up in here now. Just double click it and hit Start. And it should boot up into the Windows 10 installation. So we'll go through that. This part might take a minute, but if there's any part where there's like a long delay, I'll just edit the video so you don't have to sit through all that. Hopefully it shouldn't take too long. Um, so go ahead and hit next on this and install now. Uh, just click next on or uh, actually I don't have a product key um, we don't need that uh, that's weird that brought up something on my other screen um, you don't have to activate this uh, we're gonna use Windows 10 home don't worry about all the other ones just use home uh, hit next Hit accept and then next again. Uh, for this, hit custom install Windows only. And then for this, you can just select drive zero and hit next again. This is like what, hey, what uh, partition are you wanting to install to? Well, there's only one, so just hit it and hit next. And this is the part that's going to take a while. So it's going to go through your typical Windows 10 installation and set everything up. Um, my guess is this may take, it's just going to depend on your computer, uh, but it'll probably take maybe five minutes, maybe. Uh, but I'll see you guys when this is done. 
Okay, uh, so yeah, that only took like two minutes, and it actually automatically reboots the machine and goes into this initial Windows 10 setup, and then Cortana started, it really scared me because I wasn't expecting that, but Cortana started speaking to me, so I instantly muted her. Um, but this is kind of, if you just let it sit, finish its uh, setup, it brings you to the screen here for like the initial uh, setup on your machine. Um, so I'm going to hit, yeah, I'm in the U.S., uh, uh, yep, US keyboard, uh, skip that. I'm just going to do some basic setup, nothing special. And this hopefully shouldn't take too long. All right, uh, so I'm going to put my email in here, so give me one second. Then it'll ask for your password. Just enter your email address and password. And then it'll ask you to create a pin, so I'm going to create a pin. So after you enter uh, your email address, password, and PIN, uh, it'll take you to this right here. Um, I usually turn all these like special features off because they're not stuff I use, and they're stuff that I just like a real clean installation of any OS I install. I turn all that extra feature stuff off. So I'm going to hit no on this. Like If I want something turned on, I will go into settings and turn it on myself. Uh, skip for now. Um, I'm not going to back up files to OneDrive on this. This is just testing. So I'm going to do only save files to this PC. Uh, I'm going to hit no thanks on Office 365. I'm going to decline the get help from digital assistant. And all this extra feature stuff, I turn all this off. Because if I ever want to use it, I'll know how to go into settings and turn it on myself rather than all this stuff just being on and doing God knows what. So uh, turn all this stuff off and hit accept. And from this point forward, you're pretty much good to go. However, since we're using VirtualBox, there's one big thing you need to do. Um, it's kind of hard to explain. I think I, ex I explained it in my other VirtualBox tutorial video, but there, we have to install something called VirtualBox Guest Editions on this VM. And it kind of tells this Windows 10 installation that hey, you are a virtual machine, and here's all this extra functionality to help make the virtual, virtual machine kind of work uh, uh, better. It allows like the virtual machine to access the clipboard from my native machine. It allows the resolution scaling to work properly, and it, it makes the virtual uh, machine feel a lot smoother. Um, so we need to install guest uh, the VirtualBox guest editions uh, onto this VM as soon as Windows boots up and I'll show you how to do that so if this takes too long I'll just edit the video but I don't think it will take that much longer alright uh, so we got Windows 10 here so if you notice, the resolution's not filling up my screen. It's just kind of this box that's in the window. Um, what we need to do, let me go ahead and just clean some of this up. I'm, I'm really picky about uh, my computers and just making stuff clean. Like I'm, I'm not using Edge, so I'm going to delete that. Uh, we'll use it in a second to download Chrome or Firefox, but I usually just like remove Edge. I don't care about the Windows Store. I don't care about their mail client. Just cleaning some of this stuff up. Um, 
go ahead and empty the recycling bin. Uh, so one thing you might notice, the mouse, uh, first of all, the resolution's weird. Uh, also, the mouse, something on it just has this kind of like jank slowness to it. And the way we're going to fix uh, fix that and the resolution, and also I believe the guest editions adds the clipboard functionality so it can access your native machine's clipboard. Um, if you go to devices up here at the top and click insert guest edition CD image, it's actually going to insert a CD into this virtual machine CD drive that knows how to install the all the guest editions um, software. So I went ahead and clicked it. It might take a second for it to automatically run. Or it should automatically run. If it doesn't, you should be able to go into File Explorer and see the CD pop up. Yeah, it's right here. Um, so I don't know why it didn't auto run, but just go to uh, this PC and click the CD we just entered, the VirtualBox Guest Edition CD. And you want the uh, Windows Editions AMD64 one right here. Just go ahead and double click that. Uh, click yes on the UAC prompt and just go through all this uh, you can leave everything default and it's usually pretty quick uh, once it's installed we'll probably have to uh, reboot the machine uh, go ahead and click install on this as well um, so yeah you just click reboot now and hit finish and it should automatically reboot the VM. I'm going to enter my PIN number. And as soon as Windows loads back up, we should see um, it should eventually, once everything's fully loaded, it should... I can already tell, like, the mouse movement is way smoother. It doesn't feel super jank. But now let's go to uh, display settings. Uh, it might take a second. Hold on one second. Uh, keep changes. I'm not sure why the, there it is. I think it just takes a second. It has to, uh, so the reason you saw the login screen where the resolution was still messed up is because that all those guest edition files that installed are on like my, on. you have to actually log into the machine for the machine to even know about them. So I had to log in and then kind of wait a second for everything to update and boot up and load. But once it, once it loaded, you saw, I didn't really even change anything. It just, now the resolution works properly. So I can full screen it. Um, if uh, by default, if you hold, if you want this VM to actually be full screen on your monitor, uh, you can press the right control key on your keyboard and press F for full screen, and it'll full screen it. And then it gives you this little bar at the bottom where you can access all the virtual box menus. Um, and then you can press uh, right control and then F again to unfull screen it. Um, so yeah, that at, at that point you're we're good to go. We have our little lab environment set up. Um, so yeah, I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. In the next one, we're probably going to go over, uh, I don't know what the next one will be. It'll probably be like how to just do basic socket programming with Python. And we'll do like basic, uh, sending basic messages between my native computer and this virtual machine. But yeah, I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.